Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of the Anything Wrestling Podcast. And today, living up to our word, Anything Wrestling, we are here to actually review the first ever AEW pay-per-view. That's right, we are taking a break for WWE for a minute, but we will be back, of course. Today, unfortunately, it is not a triple threat. We are missing Dan the Man. However, it is the Sean to <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen... My name is The Commish. Not only am I the advocate of the podcast, but I will also be going all in on this double or nothing (laughs) pay-per-view review. Uh Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Let's just get this shit over with. Uh, Today's sponsor, today's episode is brought to me in part by Kirkland Water. Again, get that natural... Refreshing taste of high quality H2O. Also, this episode is brought to you in part by our Anything Wrestling Podcast infamous list. Why is it brought to you in part by the list? Well, because if you're not move number 617, the Boston Cream Pie, I don't know what the hell you are. What's the next move after that? Uh, number 618, the Arm Bar. Did someone say Arm Bar? Did I mention you can catch all the Arm Bars in the world only on the WWE Network for a non-negotiable but very reasonable price of only $9.99. $9.99? It's not $10. It's not $1,000, nor is it $1 million. But... But, uh, hey, alright, let's get to it. Let's do it. Let's start off with their first official, since technically their unofficial uh, pay-per-view was last year in September, right? Yeah. All in. Uh, So this time they decided to continue the theme of gambling since it took place live at the MGM Grand Garden, uh, Double or Nothing. Uh, First of all, few notes before the the pre-show, the, the buy-in, as they called it. Uh, I want to congratulate Justin Roberts for furthering his career since he left, what, 2014? I left think the so, WWE. Yeah. Um, not going to lie, I really miss JR. Yeah, just seeing him back on commentary, like, the guy still got it. You oh, know? yeah. Um, so he wasn't in the pre-show. You had commentators Alex Marvez and Excalibur. Um, it seemed very light on their part. Maybe they're, they'll get more in it. In tune with it, yeah. Uh, but the pre-show, the buy-in started in with the, apparently, the 21-man casino battle royale. So the way, they had an interesting take. I kind of like the way the battle royale works. So the way they introduced it is that, um... I guess you start out with a set of wrestlers already in uh, the ring, and they're comp they're comprised of uh, what do you call it? Um, like after what five minutes? Oh, it says okay, five wrestlers start the match. Every three minutes, five more wrestlers would enter. Uh, the but they would come in as like suits. As far as like the suits of and in the deck of cards. Okay. So you had the we'll start with the clubs which was Dustin Thomas, MJF, Sunny Days, Brandon Cutler, and Michael Nakazawa. That that was the suit of clubs. Uh I'm just gonna mention the standouts in each suit. Diamonds, uh Jimmy Havoc and Brian Pillman Junior. Wow. Um your standouts in the hearts. Uh, Glacier. That was something. That was a surprise in itself. And uh, Billy Gunn. Uh, Mr. Ass is a trainer at AEW, so obviously he's per- you knew he wasn't going to win this. Uh, the suit of spades, uh, the one name, even though it's five, that stands out, Tommy Dreamer. Uh, the traveling man, as he is. Yeah. And, of course, apparently the Joker is a suit in itself, which is also the winner of the Battle Royale, uh, Adam Page. The nostalgia was there. I liked it. Um, some of the, some of the guys did stand out. Like I, I wasn't aware of Brian Pillman. I mean, had a son in wrestling. Yeah. 
Um, Jimmy Havoc was a name that stood out. Uh, this kid MJF stood out. He's gonna. It looks like he's gonna be the dominant heel, especially for what he did later on in the night. Yeah. And then of course, well, there's a guy named Jungle Boy. Yeah. Uh, he stood out to me. Ace Romero, big, huge guy who could fly. That was scary. How big he was. Um. What else did I write down? Uh, there was a guy with two amputated legs, right? Yeah, that threw me off so bad, and I'm just like. Wow. I I like the inclusivity. Yeah. Still kind of scary. Yeah. Uh, but I'm going to have to give this... Uh, I gave it a B. Uh, for, for a battle royal, the, uh, I like the concept. I like how you move the next five. Not how you just bundle everyone yeah. in and then it's just massive chaos. You can't keep up with it. I think this is a better way of doing uh, battle royals. I didn't see this match entirely. I only saw highlights. It looks fun. I like that they're thinking outside of the box as opposed to, again, let's just... The tradition. Yeah, 30 people in there, and then up until like 10 minutes into the match, you're like, okay, I think I see so-and-so here. I think I see so-and-so there because you have all the jobbers, you know, get eliminated. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And then your other pre-show match was Kip Saban versus Sammy Guevara. Um, I think they followed in the same route of WWE putting their cruiserweights in like, hey, you got to hype the show. You got to yeah. bring it. But honestly, with these two guys, they put on the match that I wanted to see at Money in the Bank between two cruiserweights that yeah. we didn't get to see. Like these guys were there. They went all fucking out. They yeah. fought with the high flying, like the, the constant, like one upsmen of the other. Um, granted that Kip Saban won the match, I was actually rooting for Sammy Guevara. Like, he looked like the more impressive wrestler in the match. Um, shocked by this, I gave it an A. Okay. Uh, so we move into the actual event itself. Uh, we have the team of SoCal Uncensored, which is, I'm surprised he's still wrestling, Christopher Daniels. Frankie Kazarian and Scorpion Sky versus, I guess, the team called Strong Hearts. I guess they come from a from a Japanese yeah. uh, company, OVE, I think they kept I, saying. I think so, yeah. Uh, which consisted of Seema, T-Hawk, and L. Lindemann. Um, what did, you, did you see this one? I did see this. Uh, took a minute or two for it to pick up, but towards the end, it was just mass chaos, which is what I like because always in a six-man tag, you don't want it to be, you know, tag, tag. Like, you don't want one person coming in at a time. You want chaos. So towards the end, I would say the last six or seven minutes of this match was like, like when it started picking yeah, up when faster, was, someone yeah. would do a spot and this other guy would come and do a springboard would do a spot and this other guy would roll out and do a spot. So, um, like I think scales. these like these guys from Japan they stood out like they obviously are the ones that like want to you know hey I get it we're from this other company but you guys invited us here yeah we're gonna put on the show better than your guys that are signed to AEW. Um, but I gotta say that the, that's exactly what I wanted. Yeah. Nonstop. Hey, I the ref lost control. Yeah. But everyone's involved. Yeah. So far, this this, this show is shooting off like yeah. bangers, and again, an A. Really good opening match. Um. So you were annoyed with who was commentating the next match. For the women's... <laughs> okay, so it was supposed to be a triple threat match. Yeah. Um, and it kept getting annoying, the emphasis on this one wrestler's profession. I get it off air. She's a dentist in real life. <laughs> Dr. Britt Baker, uh, DMD, versus Nyla Rose, versus Kylie Ray. Versus a surprise entrant, which I I totally forgot about her, um, but I'm glad they brought her into the company. Awesome Kong, yeah. formerly known in the WWE Karma. as Karma. Um, so here here's my thing. Other than the constant mentioning of this girl being a doctor, and the whole thing of like you're a female an announcer. For a fatal four way match, it, it was okay. Yeah. My annoyance is the female Tatanka. 
which was Nyla Rose. Because here's my thing, and and I, and I have this thing where I'm very critical of particular wrestlers. So, if I'm introduced to you, if I if if I'm told, hey, watch this person's match, whether you're a face or a heel. If you wrestle decent, I'll, I'll give you a shot. If you impress me in the match, okay, I'm going to start following. I'm going to start liking you regardless of what you are. If you cut a good promo, hell, I'll still be interested. But if you're cutting a promo before the event saying that you run the women's division in all the landscape of wrestling, and I'm talking about Nyla Rose, I'm sorry I'm not invested. I'm not because honestly... There is way better women's wrestlers in every other company. Better than you. Hell, I'd put torn ACLs over you. And I fucking hate her a lot lately. I made this uh, similarity. Um, Smiley Candy is her name? Candy. Oh, Smiley Kylie Ray. Kylie Ray. Um, reminds me a lot of Bailey. I, I see a very toned down Bailey in her. Kind of like an emoji-based Bailey, right? Yeah. Yeah, I saw that um, too. Great match. However, awesome Kong. There was a section in the match where she went missing for like six minutes. And I'm like, where the hell is she? I think it was towards the end. Yeah. Because roughly in the middle, semi towards the end of the match where she got went missing. I'm like, where the hell is she? Um, I think that's kind of the, a botch in their part. Because or, they, or maybe she was hurt or something was up. I don't know. But um, no, yeah. I enjoyed the match. Um, yeah, but that female commentator was like she had some moments that were more like disingenuine than Renee Young so and she was talking crap about her own opponent in a couple months yeah and Brandy Rhodes um again uh, I was I geeked out when I saw Awesome Kong I uh, like holy crap this girl's still in wrestling she's doing her own thing I think I would have marked out Two, if um, I saw, uh, what's her name in, in AEW? Uh, Jazz. <laughs> but Jazz, apparently, she recently gave up her, uh, what do you call it? Her NWA Women's Championship after almost a thousand days of holding it. Wow. Due to injury or something. Um, moving forward, I gave it a B. Good just because of the commentary, just because of one of the participants in the match, I was just like, oh, God. Uh, then we have, what was it, a tag team match? So, it seems like they're really focused on tag teams so They far. should be. And and I'm kind of liking it. Uh, so, we have the uh, the team of best friends, Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta versus Angelico and Jack Evans. Um Apparently, Angelico and Jack Evans are representing, like, Lucha Libre because they're more high flyers. They're, they're more invested yeah. in the Lucha Libre aspect of wrestling. And, wow, for for white boys, they can fly. <laughs> they really can. I, I thought, as far as one-on-one, Chuck Taylor and Angelico really stole the match as far as, like, outdueling the other. And it kind of reminded me of, like, Johnny Gargano, like, not giving up so quick. Like, just two and a third. Ah, kick out. Two yeah. and a three quarter. Ah, he almost went, you know? Yeah. I liked it. Um, I don't know if you caught this match. This was the one match that I, I actually skipped, yeah. I, I, so, here's the thing. You, you're very adamant about tag matches. Yeah. I can tell you, if I'm not invested in the very beginning, I will be disin, disingenuinely interested in yeah. a tag match. I was invested in the very beginning to the end of it. I rated it as high as an A. Wow. Like, and, and this is the thing about this event. Like, they're bringing people from around the world and they're just lights out every match. But just be careful that you don't bring too many people because then you have WWE where you have a surplus of talent and not everybody's getting enough time. Exactly. Uh, again, like I said, I gave it an A. They're very impressive. Um, then we have a women's six-man tag match. All Japanese representation. Uh, Hikaru, Shida, Ryo Abe, and Ryo Misunami versus Aja Kong, 
legend in the industry. Yuka Sakaz- Sakazaki and Emma Sakura. Um, basically, they branded the match students versus teachers. Yeah. Like, obviously, Team Aja Kong was like the teachers versus Hikaru's team of being the students. Um, it was kind of slow. I don't know if you caught it. I didn't know. It, so the match is kind of slow. It it, it 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 took a while for the pace to catch up. Um, it kind of like was putting me to sleep at the very beginning. Um, but once the pace picked up, I think what it is it, with most of these matches is the the pre show to to getting to the match jitters. Yeah, like crap. They, our moment is coming. You know, we're, we're we're getting ready to do this. Are we gonna live up to the hype? You know. Um, I liked it. I, I, it was a decent match. It wasn't the greatest, but again, like you're saying, surplus of talent that you're calling from other companies. If you don't give them their proper time to shine, fans are going to invest in something they're not going to be right. Really into. Uh, I gave that a B. Um, this match is tied with uh fight of the night for me. With okay. another match. Okay. But this is the one you did... I know you caught this for sure. Uh, the American Nightmare Cody versus his older brother, Dustin Rhodes, a.k.a. The Natural. Generation versus generation. Uh, I, in a way, I call it Attitude Era versus Reality Era. In a, well, Cody can be put in both... Post ruthless aggression, yeah. Very early reality because he left. Yeah. He, here's my problem. I did have a problem, even though I gave this the best grade. The whole presentation before the match, before his brother came out. Go ahead. Is it necessary to put up a replica of Triple H's logo slash throne with the skulls? Is it necessary that you and your wife are trying to one-up Stephanie and and Hunter? And the whole thing with the sledgehammer. If you're going to take a swing, really make it look like you're swinging that thing. Um, That's my main issue. Because what is it? We don't want this to be WCW 2.0. We're wrestling fans. We actually want this company to prosper and be all elite wrestling. Granted, we're very heavy favored at, as WWE fans. Why not honor, you know, the up and comers? Yeah. That was my main issue with it. I, I don't know how, how you see, before we talk about the match, how you felt about the presentation. Like First that. of all, blatantly obvious what you're trying to do. Um, yeah, like I'm just... Killing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, the, the, the funny thing is, it's like... I don't, okay, so I don't know if Triple H is directly the one that was holding Cody down or let, was the main catalyst as to why Cody left. I don't know if, if it's just Triple H or if Triple H is a thing. Everyone seems to have this thing of that Triple H is holding people down. Triple H's ego is getting in the way. Triple H, I'm not saying it's not, but I'm just saying that look at the plethora of talent that he's allowing to shine. Look at what he's doing. He's he's creating the one part of the product that's actually salvageable. By the way, we, we do have the WWE Network playing in the background, even though we're discussing AEW. But what's playing in the background is his Genesis project, NXT. NXT. So my whole thing is like, okay, there are people like, and people say it all the time, you know, Triple H mistreated me, Triple H fired me harshly. Okay, I get it. I've always been also taught that don't take a circumstance or don't take a situation one-sided because there's always two sides to a story. So everybody could sit there and say, oh, well, Triple H just fired me on the spot or Triple H said this to me and said good riddance. Okay, maybe so. But my problem now is that we will go back to this again, but there was another jab taking uh, t- that was taken you know, during the Bret Hart segment where I'm like, okay, now instead of being your own thing, 
you are inadvertently placing yourself as somehow associated with WWE, which then leads into a Monday Night War-esque, which going back to your point, we kind of get a WCW part two. We get a sequel, we get a reboot, we get, you know, um, a prelude as to, you know, what's to, what's to come or what happened back in the day. And, and my thing is, it's like, okay, I totally forgot that happened before the Cody match. You have, I iconically, the greatest of all, one of the greatest of all time, being more than willing to come to your new company, present what you're, what everyone is there for, your new championship belt, and you're going to send one of your freaking... He looks like a mid-carder to me. I'm sorry. He does. He does to me as well. Yeah. To mock who inevitably is the GOAT of wrestling? That that to me is like, okay, really, guys? Like, he was more than happy to induct his brother-in-law into the Hall of Fame. And now he's... I'm pretty sure Vince was mad. But Vince gets over shit. He's in the opponent's inner circle and you're going to disrespect him like that I thought that was unnecessary yeah. because it's like you're supposed to be your own thing and not only that but you have the one guy who single handedly created the greatest rival faction to WCW back in the day but also destroyed his own product Eric Bischoff Calling you guys out like, why not just be yourself? Why are you reverting to antics? Yeah. The guy who created antics, by the way, is calling you out. Yeah, I, I like, okay, I get it. It's your first promotional show. You want to take a jab or two just to like, you know, distinguish. To that be the standout. That we're here. Mm-hmm. Okay. If this was, if this is a one-time thing, sure, go for it. Have your moment. But if this becomes continuous, as in we see it on TV, we see it in, you know, fighting for the fallen, we see it in All Out, it's like, okay, dude, and we, we and get we it. And we see the whole thing being a recurrent thing of F WWE, F WWE, it's like, it's going to get stale. Yeah. They're saying that they're doing this for the fans, for the fans of pro wrestling. Okay. There is no need to take a jab. At the fans. Because that's what it blatantly is. It's like you're saying that it's okay to be a wrestling fan, but don't be a fan of them. They're a part of wrestling history as well. Why can't I be a fan of WWE and AEW? Yeah. Why can't I be a fanboy of everything wrestling? Who Who is it? Um... What do you mean? Someone keeps on saying it the best. Uh, Chris Jericho. Chris Jericho always says he's like, wrestling fans love having options. It's always good to have options. Like, not only in wrestling, just in life in general. Would you rather have just one thing here? Or, hey, there's this or there's that. Whatever you want. You got an option. Why not like both? Why not yeah. have both? Maybe from time to time, I might relegate to just this. Maybe times I might go, you know what? I, I probably just want to do this. Or maybe at times I want to go, you know what? Let's check out both. Let's see what's going on. And granted, this is coming from the guy who... As established, his yeah. As his character is already taking the jabs at Brock Lesnar. Cody wrote, or Cody did something. I don't know if you saw the off-the-air footage. Uh, it was uploaded by Woke Culture. Mm-hmm. Basically, Cody just comes out, gives a quick speech, and he's like, this to me was kind of... Was this before the event? No, after? after. This was after. Oh, so I kind of... Okay, I think I know what you're talking about, but I saw it in Jericho's perspective. Because Jericho was in the back, watching it on a TV, being annoyed, while Kenny, Cody, the Young Bucks, Brandy, were all like, thank you guys for being out here, blah, blah, blah. And he's just like, where's my thank you? Because I guess Jericho wanted a thank you from the crowd for beating Kenny Omega. I I, I think that's a character thing. Yeah. But I, I like how he's back there like, no one's here for you guys. 
They're here for me. Well, the one point I was going to make was when Cody made this bold statement. He's like, granted, you should think this way, especially if you're operating a, you know, a wrestling company. I promise you we will never, ever, ever let you down. That's a bold statement. And I'm make. like, okay, I like the motivation. I like the drive, but you're, 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 you're jumping ahead way too far. And I, I've said it before, I want to give credit to AEW, which I will, but until when on a weekly basis you can create great television programming and have the pay-per-views to back it up, because it's very easy to have one pay-per-view once every couple months and go, oh, we hit it out of the park. Yes, you did, because it's just one. You need to... Kind of like with last year with All In. Yeah. They're on. By the way, that's their unofficial pay-per-view. Why do I say that? Because they had Ring of Honor, they had NWA, multiple promotions. they had NJPW there. They had everyone. Yeah. And especially when, like, Dustin, again, like, we, we kind of tangented it off away from the match, but Dustin is We're like... getting back to it. Yeah. Dustin is like, Vince McMahon, watch your ass. And I'm like, okay, right. This yeah. is the same guy, by the way, who helped your father and the both of you by... Signing you to his company. Yeah, you may have had your your quarrels and your beefs with him in the past, especially when you left WWE for WCW and WCW repackaged you as a horrible ghost. Seven? Yeah. Yeah. But come on, man. Like I just again, like again, we like and I get it, the press and the media are gonna are always asking you. What do you think of WWE? What do you think of this? And you can answer and go, you know, I would be like very modest. I would be like, they're doing them. We're doing us. Or even then I'd be like, you know what? I I would answer that way or I would answer like, hey, you know, they're doing their thing. You know, they're, they're still a great company. You know, fans should be able to enjoy them. This is what we want to do for the fans as well. You know, kind of like what Jericho said. You should be able to enjoy both options without the fear of like, mm -hmm. No, you can only like one. And Jericho even is like, you know, there are there's certain topics that when you bring up, there is one idea that comes to mind. He's like, for example, wrestling, you think of... WWE. Soda, you think of... Coke. So, you know, this whole thing of like, Vince, better watch out. Yeah, we're never going to let you down. Like, WWE down, used to have the Attitude Era and... I'm sorry, but look at where we are now. So you can look what happened after five years. You can be on top, but just bump the brakes a little bit. Storms don't last forever. Exactly. Is all I'm saying. But getting to the actual match finally. If I could can I take over this one first? You you had a lot to say about this match. I have a lot to say. First of all, match of the night for me. Okay. Without a doubt. Okay. Secondly, um, there for me too. Cody brought this up and said the old school idea of storytelling. And I think that it was in every single way because you know where these guys come from. You know what family they're a part of. You know what this is. This is AEW. It's double or nothing. It's the first pay-per-view. It's the family lineage. It's, it's one era versus another era. The match itself that was concocted was awesome. And I told you guys this before. I was very concerned for Dustin. I, while I was while I was enjoying the match, I'm like, you know, I'm kind of concerned about this guy's health because we talked about it before. Everything that happened with Stevie Richards, everything that WWE has tried to cut out, I'm like, I like me some blood from time to time when it's right, if it's right. But Dustin, it just it kept on gushing out, and I'm like, this guy better not like you know collapse in front of our own two eyes because it was scary for a second. His face was covered like it was covered in blood. Um. Absolutely great match. I love, you know, the interference and, you know, Cody trying to be a heel and all this and that. DDP taking D out DDP, the interference. Very, very quick appearance. But I will say this. I honestly felt like the wrong person won. I thought that Dustin should have walked away from this match being the victor. Um, just because I feel like Dustin was a guy where he never really got that, that main event momentum that main event spotlight that main event feel even though we all knew that he could go and i felt like now that the, now that he was center stage of double or nothing he should have been the one that well, won the match let me let me read off to you his accomplishments his own yeah 
Uh, as far as WCW, two-time United States champion, uh, one-time six-man tag team champion. Okay. So, yeah, there was a WCW World Six Man Tag Team Championship. Okay. Uh, two-time tag team champion in WCW. Uh, NWA World Tag Team Champion in WWE. Nine-time Hardcore Champion. <laughs> Three-time Intercontinental Champion. Two-time WWE Tag Team Champion. One-time World Tag Team Champion. It's the one belt in both those companies that's alluded in. World Heavyweight heavy Champion. Like and this is a guy who I too think deserved that one moment in his entire career to be the man. I wouldn't have minded if we did, if there was like a storyline of Gold Dust transitions into the natural, Dustin Rhodes. Possibly goes to a money in the bank, wins the match, cashes in, becomes champion. Because would I would have done this years ago, though. I would have done this maybe around 2013, 2014. Like his last return. Yeah, day, right? because if you recall when he had that one match with Randy Orton where Cody Rhodes' job was on the line, he gave a main event performance. Um, and people were still shocked of, oh my goodness, he still got it. Like, you know, he's a veteran, he's got some age on him, but the guy still got it. And I felt like in Double or Nothing, it was just that, like, this guy still, he still had it. Um,. But I will say this, uh, I will not lie when I say that post speech by Cody got me emotional, got me very emotional actually. Um, glad to know that Dustin is still gonna, you know, still have a match. Um, I doubt that he's gonna go for like another long run. I, I think we're just gonna do maybe a couple appearances and that'll be it. Well, I think what it is is that, okay, so, so let me say my part of the match. Yeah. Honestly, it, it really did remind me of the Attitude Era with the blood and the violence. It also brought me even further back to traditional wrestling, like the Golden Age. Yeah. And even Jim Ross, like they, I think Alex or Excalibur asked him, like, "Hey, you knew, you've known both of these men. You've even known their father. How do you think Dusty would feel about this match right now?" And he said, honestly, he, he wouldn't be okay with it. It would kind of hurt his heart. Yeah. But at the same time, they were putting on a match, not only against each other but, and for each other, but I think they were doing it for Dusty himself. Because honestly, like I saw a little bit of everything in this match. Yeah. And there was storytelling. There, there, there was... The suspense, the oh my Roller god, coaster. the even you even got a holy shit out of the match. You even got a you still got it, yeah. And uh, this is awesome. And you got dusty chance too, yeah. Like this brought everything, and I agree. I think Cody should have put Dustin over. Yeah, he should have put his older brother over because honestly, I know Dustin's okay with it, and he said that's his retirement match. We know it's not because he has an up-and-coming tag team match against the Young Bucks yeah. in a couple months, but I would have put Dustin over. Yeah, I would have given him the win. I Like I said, th this is up there as match of the night. Regardless of the shenanigans before it, I gave this an A because it gave me everything I have wanted to see. And I think that's what it is about Cody, too. Yeah, I feel like he maybe have has a personal grudge, maybe with Triple H, hence the whole demonstration. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I get how invested you are in, in wrestling, how much you love this, and how much it means to your family. Then that's fine. And I'm glad that you're able to, like, you are risking everything. By starting this company with, you know, your best friends. I'm glad that you, you found a good investor with uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars owner and his son or his brother or whatever he is, Tony Khan. But please, like, if you're going to really invest in this, be your own thing. for Just for us as fans. Don't 
follow the path that WCW followed. Don't do this because you're trying to reinvent your father's legacy because he was a part of the building blocks of WCW in its heyday. Yeah. And it fell apart. Do this for yourself. Honor your father. Honor your family. Don't fall into a trap. Right. Is all I ask. Uh, moving on to the next match, which was another tag team match for... Hold on. It was for the AAA World Tag Team Championship. Uh, you have the Young Bucks versus the Lucha Brothers. Did you catch this one? I only saw highlights. I didn't catch this I'm going to be dead honest with you. It put me to sleep. Wow, really? I have very, very big judgmental standard on this match. Because I told you, two minutes into a match, if I'm bored, I'm not going to enjoy the match. I'm going to be on my phone. Or I'm going to be bored. Yeah. If I fall asleep, that's a lot worse. And granted, I was watching this in the afternoon. I wasn't at 2 in the morning watching this. Yeah. I was watching it in the afternoon, and it's like, I'm bored. I've heard the hype. I've seen the hype. I, 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 I know who the Young Bucks are. You're not impressive to me. Fair enough. I'm, I'm sorry, but you can't claim to be the greatest tag team in the world... And not catch my attention. I get it. You're all about the fans. You're all about wrestling just like Cody. And even the fact that most of the money they make off their merchandise, they give it right back. Cool. You really are about the people. But if you're not capturing my interest as a fan of wrestling, I'm sorry. I I can't. Well, I will say this. Um, It is definitely one of those things where wrestling is subjective and objective. Um, Some people might argue, hey, it could be a slow 10-minute start to the match and I will still be interested. I didn't catch this match because I guess I was... I just wanted to get to Omega and Jericho. Um, I I did see uh, the highlights that they had at the end of the match, the replays, and I'm like, holy crap, a lot of intense spots in this match. But... um, yeah, I just, I just, I, I fast forwarded through. I didn't really and that, and that's sad because it's like, like I get it. Like we want to get to the main things we want to see. Yeah. But you should still in your highlights be able to capture our interest. And if and if that can't even be done, it's a real big problem for me as a fan. Um, the Lucha Brothers were more entertaining to me than Nick and uh, Matt are. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but. You're not the greatest tag team ever. There's better teams. Shane and the Miz. I'll even put them up there. Wow. There's Shane and the Miz. There's the Hardy Boys. The Dudley Boys. Legion of Doom. Shield. Shield. New Day. I can keep going. Well, You, you don't even crack my top 50. Wow. That's how bad that is. That you're claiming that. And you've won multiple championships everywhere. Except the WWE, fine. I get it. You tried out. They didn't take you guys. But and maybe you hold that in your repertoire that you're the greatest. Hell, I'll put the Revival over you. I don't even consider that a diss because the Revival... They're a better team. Modern era. They're a great team. They're one of the best. I would put if if we're talking modern era tag teams, they're in my top five. Definitely. Hell, they're top three. Three. Yep. Exactly. This match was a D. Okay. And then we get to the main event, the Alpha versus the Omega, the Mister Rockstar, Mister Controversial, Chris Jericho versus Kenny Omega. Part two, technically. I'm not going to lie. I really wished that Kenny Omega had signed to WWE, but I'm glad he didn't. Because look where WWE I'm is. I'm glad he didn't either. Because honestly, yeah, I, I heard the rumors of how much money they were going to give him, creative how much control. creative control of his own character. Yeah, that only lasts so long. I'm glad you said no. Because your career would have been done. The second it began. 
the second it, it continued in the WWE. So I'm glad for Omega that he's not yeah. with WWE. Um, <coughs> the last match they had, I was like, holy crap! The build up, Jericho being the way he is with, with the rival, heel, yeah, I love it. It, it, it's it's exactly what wrestling should be like your face and your heel your good guy bad guy yeah I'm the better no I'm the better prove it I'm gonna prove it it's again this is just like Cody and Dustin <coughs> the build up is there um I if you wanna yeah um so I will just say this uh Omega versus Jericho was entertaining um, I just felt like something just wasn't there that the Dustin and Cody match had. I had so, slow moments. So that's why it, it was the match of the night for me. Glad that Jericho won. Oh, like, Jericho, bless you, but you put way too many people over. So it's like, I'm like... The, one, the time you get to be over. Yeah, you need to be over this time. You just, you have to. Like, that's it. No Who more won putting. part one? I think both of them was Omega. You you talking about in Japan? Their first match, yeah. That was Omega. So is this the second time they meet up, or has there I been think a this match? This is third, technically. Okay. Technically, um, because I think they met in New Japan beginning of twenty eighteen. I remember that. Then I think all in they met a second time, if I'm not mistaken, and this was their third. But if you want to look that up, let me know if I'm wrong. Um, yeah. Um, I I thought a great match. Um, you know. Uh, Good to see Jericho, you know, uh, be in the main event. Um, they just, they had to basically outperform Cody and Dustin, which I don't think they necessarily did. But I love the fact that even after the match, Jericho grabs a microphone and just goes full-blown heel and goes, I'm the reason you guys are all here. Now, I will say this. Jericho does bring a lot of eyeballs and a lot of media to AEW. And that is, that's not just him being a heel. That's like... It's for certain. It's the truth. Because I wouldn't have watched uh, New Japan last year, that, that match between him and, him and Omega, if Jericho wasn't in there. I would not have tuned in. I'm saying that right now. Um, but the fact that Jericho grabs that microphone is full-blown heel. And then out comes the surprise, John Moxley. John Moxley. And what's so funny is Cody made a comment. He's like, if you like notice... As he's coming to the ring and as he's in the ring, he's like unhinging as he's like in the ring, like with like the shoulder like swerves and like, you know, the way he nails um, Jericho, he nails the referee, goes to nail Omega. And I love the way they booked this because they made it obvious that, okay, now Moxley and Omega are in a program together. Omega gets some uh, offense in, they fight through the crowd, go all the way to the stage on the chips. Um... Uh, Ambrose nails him with uh, I don't know what he's calling it now but we'll just say Dirty Deeds for now and then AA's Omega from the top of the chips to the stage um, I think that if you like to cap off an event like um, Double or Nothing you need to have a surprise in there and I think that was really good timing having John Moxley in there. Well the thing was everyone was wondering where Dean Ambrose slash John Moxley, uh, Jonathan's his real name, right? Jonathan Good, yeah. yeah. Where Jonathan was going to go. Everyone kept wondering, like, is he going to Ring of Honor? Is he going to Impact? Is he going to AEW? Um, is he going to get rebranded in WWE? Nobody knew. Yeah. As wrestling fans, um, you wanted the best for him. I wanted... Yeah. Like, I, I feel bad... His career in WWE ended the way it did. But I think this is a good thing for him. Because honestly, um, to take away the fact that it's like, if you as a wrestler are not invested where you work in, but you have a lot more to give, why are you still there? Again, you good to have choices. Yeah. And I like the fact that, you know, uh, he... Charles AEW. And by the and this is the second time they've met officially in a match. Oh, okay. uh, their, their incident after All In was just like a, after a match Kenny had. Okay. So it's 1-1. One, one. Okay. Um, there might be a grudge match, but I'm, uh, that's probably going to be somewhere yeah. down the line. 
I liked the fact that, like, yeah, Jericho got over. He still did his traditional, hey, I'm the man. No one else in this company is. Yeah. And even when he had the Marks line, I was just like, wow. And he flipped everybody. Yep. Like, sit down, Marks. I um, personally thought, like, all right, this is the Jericho I've grown up with. This is the Chris Jericho I know. That's, that's what I love is, like, no restriction on the heel. You know, because, and he knows how to reinvent it. Oh yeah, for for sure. Um, I don't know if you saw the John Moxley promo afterwards, where um, he's going into a dressing room and a camera guy follows him, and um, I'm paraphrasing, but he says something about uh, being in a toxic environment, and now he's like, "We're no longer reading history books; we're writing them," and that's obviously a direct jab at, you know, um, but um. You know, I kind of thought, like, again, I had some concern because I'm like, okay, we're now in a company where there's no restrictions. I fear for the health of John Moxley because we've seen the insane things he'll put his body through. And I just hope that he is still in one piece, you know. Um, but, hey, sometimes you need to edge your television. Sometimes you need that extra, you know, element in there. So And it was great to see him. Like, he, he looked comfortable. He looked like he was in an environment where he belonged. He looked like he wasn't stifled. Yeah. And the fact that it's like, all right, he makes his debut. It didn't need to be a match. It was the right time of the event. And I think that is the best way to end it. Because, yeah, there was something that happened earlier with like oh someone coming in but then it was like really downplayed after yeah John Mossy like I think literally not only stole the show but like just branded it like hey this is AEW put, put the stamp on it mm-hmm. and he didn't just lay waste to one person he laid waste to everyone involved the ref Kenny and Chris yeah and I think that's what it needed and it's like honestly if you ever Google his death matches, I, they're very cringe. Be forewarned, blood. A That's, lot. And we're not talking faucet of blood. We're talking like... Like covered, whole body covered. In gallons blood. of it. The fact that he survives. <laughs> um, I gave this match an A. Um, again, it's not the match of the night. It's close up to it, but... Cody and Dustin stole the show. Yes, 100%. I, all in all, I enjoyed um, Double or Nothing. I will definitely tune in to the next pay-per-views. I feel like as it goes on, you're going to get to know who each person is. I think because now it's like I have a disconnect. at Like um, even, uh, what's his name? Um, was it Jericho? Who? Whoever it was said something about how um, he's like, you know, um, I, I don't I don't I didn't even know who, you know, so and so was, you know, and, uh, you know, but um, I watched their match and I'm like, holy crap, like, you know, like these people have talent. So I think there's a lot of people that a lot of us fans don't know about. But thankfully, with AEW now being put on the map, it's like now these people kind of get that spotlight with the help of the John Moxies, with the help of the Jerichos, with the help of the Dustins of the world. So I enjoy Double or Nothing. I'm not going to say, I don't, again, I'm not going to sit here and say pay per view of the decade because it obviously wasn't. They got to be to me. Yeah. Uh, but definitely entertainment value. Um, and I think at this point, it's like, I'm just going to take AEW one step at a time and just see where their product ends up. I, I like how the product is. I, I like where they're going with it. I'm hoping that they steer away from the obvious. Yeah. Like, we don't have to mention it anymore, but please do. Um, that belt. That's big. It's huge. It's a lot of gold. Okay, is it just me, or, or are they trying to put a presentation together to take a jab at the 24-7 title? Well, that's the thing. In a post-interview, even Cody took a jab at it. And to me, it's like, dude, you just had your event. Why are you still at it? Like, come on, man. Like, <laughs> One of my friends, he's, so when, when Double or Nothing, like when we were leading up into it, he's like, you think uh, AEW is going to put WWE out of business? 
I'm like, giving them competition, yes. Putting them out of business. I um, think it'll it'll finally wake WWE up from this coma it's been in. Because well, if we okay, let's be real. We rated WrestleMania really low. Money in the bank wasn't. No, 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 no. It, it was better, Money but it wasn't in, great. I would say it's great. It wasn't amazing. Not amazing, but it was, it was great. great. It felt like someone else was running the show, which was needed. Yes. If it can continue, and along with its regular TV programming, start to get better. Then I'm ready to watch the competition. I'm ready to see. Oh, AEW one up it. Oh, Raw one up now. Oh, SmackDown one up. Oh, AEW is fighting back. Like I feel like a teenager again, with the Attitude Era. But I want it to be where it's like they're not one upping it. Like oh, we're doing better than WWE. No, we're doing better because we're bringing you a better product. Yeah. And then Raw and SmackDown are answering like, hey. We're still the better product, too. Come enjoy us both. You have options. You know, let's talk about this for a second. So you're saying that hopefully this will, you know, take WWE out of the coma that it's been in. So Double double or Nothing was this past Saturday. Yeah. Yesterday was Monday Night Raw. I thought that Monday Night Raw, first of all, got off to a very weak start because when you keep on teasing that Lesnar's going to reveal tonight who he's cashing in, he comes in and then he just leaves. I'm like, okay, so we're wasting time. We're not giving other talent the time to do their thing. Fine. That Dolph Ziggler part was awesome, was great. Hell, any promo Dolph has been doing right now yeah. has been great. Um, and then you go, the whole Shane McMahon thing where he, you know, goes inside the ring, um, you know, walks back up the ramp and goes, I'm not ready. Comes back out again. Is standing there. Drew McIntyre is his bodyguard all the time. Yeah. And it's like that whole thing. Like the crowd is chanting, this is boring. And I'm thinking to myself, I'm like, okay, you know what? If there was ever any doubt that Vince McMahon is stuck in the Attitude Era, this is this is your proof. Because, yeah, back in 2000, 2001 would be the times where a McMahon would, you know, take over the ring and would have a 15, 20 minute promo trying to engage the audience. That worked back then. In 2019, a McMahon standing out in the ring and regurgitating the same thing like, okay, you have a Stephanie McMahon come out. Welcome to Monday Night Raw. This Sunday, like, we know what this Sunday is. You don't need to come out and tell us. You're wasting time. You're not giving your talent enough, you know, airtime. And it's like, it, it's it's beyond frustrating. It's like, you know for a fact, like, AEW is putting a product together. You need to one-up your game. You need to give people a reason to tune in on Monday. And it seems like you throw that all away and you're like, yeah, there's someone out there who's rivaling us, but we're just, we're going to continue with our same old shtick. Like... I, I sincerely hope that they wake up. I sincerely hope. That well, they, they need wake up. the wake up. They need the shake up as well. <laughs> I thought I thought double or nothing would have been the, like the wake hey, up, but you just saw what they did. You just saw how nine mat. No, if you don't include the pre-show, seven matches, seven matches compared to with. You know what? I'm just going to look it up right now. WrestleMania was 17, if you are wondering. I'm, I'm going to Money in the Bank. I'm comparing it to, like, the most recent. Okay, go ahead. 11 matches. Is 11 to 7. And then with WrestleMania, 17 matches. What does that say? That says, hey, wake the fuck up. That's another thing, too, is having these four or five hour... Pay- like, I remember when, like, WrestleMania was three hours and 45 minutes long. Every other pay-per-view was, like, two hours. Two, 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 and a half, two and a half at most. Now, it seems like every other pay-per-view is four or five hours long. It's like... It doesn't need to be so I'm long. a hardcore wrestling fan. It's my life. But even I gotta admit, I'm like, dude, you know I what? need a break. I, I, I can't. I can't do this. Like, don't get me wrong, I, I love watching WWE, I love watching Raw, SmackDown, I love watching pay-per-views. But when pay-per-views are almost five, four, four to five hours long. Like, WrestleMania, it's like, 
Paul on Heyman, top of the pre-show. Yeah, Paul Heyman even took a jab. He's like, "Yeah, we're gonna have to wait as long as you waited to see, you know, your your girls match at WrestleMania." Like everybody, you could tell, like everybody's gone. Like everybody's just done, you know. Um, so I don't know. We talk about WWE getting a wake up call. We got this announcement back in December of last year that you are now the authority. Things are changing. New faces. You literally just had Brock Lesnar win Money in the Bank. You want to talk about new faces? What happened to new faces? What happened to Andrade getting the spotlight? What happened to Ricochet getting the spotlight? What happened to Cesaro getting the spotlight? And you have Brock Lesnar come out in the last 30 seconds, runs up, climbs up that ladder, picks up the briefcase, and you expect to get to good do to do good in ratings. So, my closing sentiments is: everybody says that competition is good for everyone. I agree, and I'm gonna leave it at that. I want to invest in something new, but I, I'm not going to get sucked in as quick because of one event. Yeah. If you one up your own event next month, cool. If it continues that way, even better. If it gives my f- competitor some balls to step up their game, hell, thank you for that. But be your own product. Yeah. Do not take jabs. Hell, embrace the competitor. You don't even have to mention them. You can just say like, hey, we're trying to be just as good as everybody else wants us to be. Hell, WWE superstars were like, hey, tonight's going to be a great night for for wrestling. Hey, history in the making. Hell, even Big E is like, hey, congratulations to Redacted. I hope Redacted does very well. Redacted means like censored. Oh, okay. And he's mentioning AEW. Oh, yeah. But he's doing that on purpose. Yeah. But again, you have wrestlers who are wishing the best for you from the other company. Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. So there you go, guys. We just reviewed um, Double or Nothing. Let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. And we will see you all 